Ready, go. Hey guys, welcome back to Live Your Style. My, no. Oh gosh. <laughs> weird. That was so weird. No, not Live Your Style anymore. All right, this is Ken Woven. <laughs> and we're going to talk about house mistakes. I kind of took a look around our place that we live in now in San Diego and I put together a list of things that I wish I would have done differently or things I learned a lesson about that's an important lesson to know when we go into the next place. And I'm hoping that from some of these mistakes that I made in our home that you guys will find some insight, you'll learn a little bit about how to decorate your space and things to be aware of and it'll help you guys in the end. The question of the video today is where do you work, what's your job, and what do you do for a living? Leave me your comment below. Subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and let's get started. The first thing that I would have done differently or first lesson that I learned is a uh, shelf liner. If you're renting, you're gonna like this tip. When you move into a new home, especially when you don't own it, it feels a little weird because like someone else has lived in it before you, someone else will live in it after you, and sometimes you don't get a brand new setup. So for example, these are really old cabinets. It has great storage, but it kind of smelt weird. So I put some shelf liner in it and it just kind of updates it and makes it feel clean. There's two different types of shelf liner. Did you know that? Well, actually there's three types, but I only have two types here. There is sticky adhesive shelf liner. The second type is voila. But if there's any pushing motion that's happening, like pulling this back or pushing that in, this cow is so loud right now. If you're gonna be pulling things out and putting them back in, this is not the one to use. It is padded, it's softer. Basically, it's not attached to the shelf, so when you try to put something in above head level that's heavy and slide it in, it kind of sits on it and pulls it with it. So I'm constantly rearranging it, pulling it out. I really need to redo this with this guy. This guy is really good for like the kitchen. If you're trying to store your pots and pans, those things are heavy and we put it on the shelf and scooch it back, this will definitely ball up and get all over the place, whereas this won't. Or you could use the third type, which is kind of like a laminate square, and that's gonna be sticky adhesive, but it's thicker. Sometimes the thinner adhesive back shelf liner, if you have like sharp edges, it can actually rip it. So getting a thicker laminate, it's more expensive, and it's kind of more of like a permanent solution. If you own your own home, it's a good investment to make. But if you're renting, the thinner stuff works and use this guy when you're not moving things around or else you're gonna be so irritated every time you wanna take something out like I am. All right, let's move on to mistake number two, which sounds kinda negative, but it's, you know, positive. I'm telling you how to fix it. Okay, let's go check it out. Okay, the second thing I would have done a little bit differently, not that I would have changed this, but you guys know I spent a little bit of time trying to update our bathroom. I really wanted to have a lot of black metals in this house and black faucets look really cool. I just wish I would have known that they're a lot more high maintenance than you would think. Whenever you have a black faucet, everything shows. So whenever like you turn the water on, water off, anything that splatters on it, it just kind of has this like white dried powdery looking stuff around it. It's not the actual faucet's fault, it's more just like the minerals from the water that dry around it. So it's just a little bit more high maintenance and something you should know if you're considering it. But another thing that kind of relates with my little faucet here is also the shower head. I got a new black shower head, but because I have a very tall husband, I opted for the shower head extender. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna take that out because Tyler doesn't even shower in here and it totally affected the water pressure. So that's like tip number three don't get a shower head extender unless you absolutely have to because you will have terrible water pressure as soon as you do because not only, it's just gravity, like it needs extra pressure if you're gonna put an extender on it to push it up the valve and then down as opposed to just down. So that's something that I would probably not recommend. I do, however, love all the organization things that we did in this bathroom. Our little hack with shower curtains, you guys know I'm all about putting your shower curtain extra high. So as you can see right here, it arches and it ends. So you couldn't really take the shower curtain all the way up. So we put the plastic shower curtain with the shower curtain rod on that normal height that most people would put it. For the actual shower curtain, I just put in an actual curtain rod on the top of the wall next to the ceiling, extended my shower curtain all the way down, and voila, 
looks so good. It makes the room look bigger, brighter, and a lot more clean and organized. If you guys are looking for any of the links for any of the things that you see in this bathroom, including the marble adhesive that I put on this stone that was originally dark blue, I'm gonna link it all below because I get lots of questions about this bathroom. So I gotcha. Check the links before you leave your questions, and if it's not there, make sure you ask me and we'll go ahead and add that if we forgot something. Okay, let's look. That was number four and number three. No, that was two and three, so let's go on to four. The fourth thing that I would have maybe done a little bit differently has to do with my light and my kitchen. So if you guys are renting like I am, take a good inventory of the lighting situation in your ceiling before you make any changes. We saved the original light fixture that was in here, but I had a different light fixture that I wanted to swap in that looked a lot prettier. It was a beautiful drum shade, and it really, unfortunately, softened the light a lot. It also was a very pretty specialty like designer fixture, so the wattage capacity is a lot lower than what you would normally get if you had like direct task lighting type situation. What I learned is unless you have canned lighting or task lighting that's also in your kitchen, do not switch out your light situation above because now the light in here, the max lumens, if you guys remember I talked about those in that lighting video we did, I can't really get a lot of brightness in here with my lumens because I don't have a ton of wattage capacity with this new fixture. Luckily, I have a stove that has a wonderful hood with very bright lights. And because this kitchen is really small, that lighting actually provides a lot of light in here. But I did kind of take away a lot of the brightness potential that I had in this space because I switched out for a really cute fixture. So, lesson learned. I never thought I'd be talking about wattage and lumens so much. It's a complicated lighting world out there, can I just say. Speaking of my stove, let me tell you about number five. Last but not least, the fifth thing that I would have done a little bit differently. Okay, so tonight I'm making leftovers, which is sweet potatoes, broccoli, um, and some rice. Last but not least, my acrylic spice rack. Now, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that I love cooking. And I actually really like having my spices so easily accessible. I love the concept of putting it above the stove. The only downside is that the holder of the spices is actually acrylic. So anytime that there's heat or grease or just things, food that flies around when you're cooking, it kind of makes the acrylic really foggy and dirty looking. Had this been wood or maybe a different you know, material, I think it would have turned out way better. And next time, I'll be sure to get a different type of spice holder because I like, again, I like having it close. I just wish, you know, it was cleaner all the time. Okay guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this episode, this lovely video, and hopefully you learned some awesome lessons on how to decorate your home, what to avoid when you're shopping, and kind of some things to look out for. If you guys haven't hit the subscribe button, please be sure to join and subscribe and thumbs up this video. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Scout. No, baby. <laughs> Why are you doing that? Hey. Scout. Um, if you're gonna be pulling things out. <laughs> Scout. Yeah, okay. Go lay down. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Almost knocked our light over. Two, if you have any heavy things, like let's, this is pretty heavy. I probably, <sighs> don't you dare get back in the bathtub. I promise. We'll take you to the PARK in less than an hour, okay? But if I need to get something up here, that was kind of a no no, and I just recommend get your dog soft toys. That's another mistake. Get it. Get the toy. It's right there. Is it stuck? Okay, hold on. I'll get it for you. You really wedged it in there. Okay, princess. Now you're going to be quiet. We're trying to film. Oh. Bye.